MSLA machines have become extremely popular nowadays, especially with budget ones like the Mars and the Photon. They produce great quality prints every time and most people are fine with the smaller build size. But what if you want to go big? Like really big? Well, that's where the Peo Poly Phenom comes in. About eight months ago, I received the Peo Poly Phenom, or in COVID time, that's 12,552 years, give or take 12,551 years, of course. The Phenom, or Phenom, whichever you prefer, is a giant machine to say the least, measuring 78 centimeters in height, 45 centimeters in width, and 36 centimeters deep weighing around 40 kilos. It has a build volume of 276 millimeters in width, 155 millimeters in depth, and 400 millimeters in height. And if that doesn't sound impressive enough in numbers, this is a visual comparison. That right there is a photon sitting shyly inside the Phenom, with room to spare, of course. Even just looking at the build plate, you can see that it trumps all other standard sized MSLA's machine, which are currently on the market. Now, unfortunately, I don't have footage of me unboxing it. However, I can tell you that it arrived packed in a box, which was packed in another box, and then something akin to wooden brackets at the corners for protection. While 99% of the machine was intact, it did suffer one little dent in the bottom corner, but it is purely aesthetical. Um, so it doesn't really bother me at all and the machine still works perfectly fine. I do know though that nowadays Pipoli are shipping the Phenom and other large MSLA printers on pallets which make it much more secure. Now before I go any further I must reiterate that safety is of paramount when using any types of resin printers. Always make sure you use glove and avoid any direct skin contact with the resin. Always use a well ventilated area due to resin fumes and when handling uncured resin, always wear additional protective gear like mask and goggles. Back to the Phenom, the machine is encased in sheet metal. It has two large fans on its sides which will help the cooling, but I'll speak about those at a later stage. It has your standard on and off switch, an ethernet port which I haven't tested yet, a USB input slot for standalone printing, and also your power input, which comes as a power brick. You also find a color touchscreen, which gives you the full control over the machine at the front. It is extremely easy to understand and very responsive. The front door opens up in one piece, giving you ample room to work around inside the machine. The Z rail, which gives you a build height of 40 centimeters, is constrained by two linear rails and a ball screw, giving you incredible precision. The LCD screen inside the Phenom is also a 4K display, which is necessary for for such a large print area and smooth edges. The life expectancy of the LCD itself is around 500 hours with replacement screens costing around $100, but I can tell you that mine has done so far about 430 hours and is still working just fine. Setting up the machine was extremely easy. Once I'm packed and switched on, simply undo the four screws holding the build plate in place, grab a piece of A4 paper and throw it on the screen, making sure that your vet has been removed by undoing the two retention knobs on the side. Just a tip here, when taking out the empty vat, always rest it on its side so you don't damage the FEP film by scratching it or uh, denting it on any surface. Go to the touchscreen, go to the spanner icon which is the tools option, press manual and home the printer which gets the build plate close to the screen enough. If the build plate is still not resting on the paper, simply lower the Z axis further through the on-screen menu and once the build plate is resting on the paper, hold it down securely with one hand while tightening the four screws of the build plate in place with the other. Once done, go back on the menu and press the Z equals zero on the screen and you're done. Raise your Z axis up high enough to be able to insert the vat and secure it in place. The resin I used is Peopoli's Deft Resin. Deft Resin is a particular recipe of resin which is made specifically for large format MSLA printers. Since the machine does not have a tilting vat, the suction forces on the FEP film are enormous and this is where the Deft Resin comes in as it helps a lot on that front, making the peeling process much easier. The slicer of choice for the Phenom is the Cheeto Box, which is an open source slicer made for resin printers. It takes a while to get used to, but it is extremely versatile and works great with the Phenom, especially with the preset templates which are on the slicer itself. Once you have set up your model on the build plate, rotated the model to your liking, placed the supports as you wish, you can simply transfer it onto a USB stick. Then once on the Phenom, it's simply a matter of choosing which file to print thanks to the preview images on the touchscreen and just let the machine do 
its work. Now the vat holds a large amount of resin, almost two liters worth in fact, and it is always suggested to keep it relatively full in order to assist the screen in absorbing the heat emitted from the UV lights underneath it. Now this is where the two massive fans come in. There is quite a lot of heat generated through the UV lamp and the electronics inside the phenom. So the fans need to move a large amount of air to keep the inside cool. And this comes with a downside. Now while printing, the phenom generates a lot of noise. So having this machine in your office is definitely a no-go. Now just to give you an idea of the sound of the fans, I am standing about two feet away from the microphone, right in front. And I'm gonna switch it on. That was the sound of the switch, just to give you a bit of perspective on the noise and wait for it. Yes, that is the sound and I'm still using the same tone of voice that I was using before. Now as my first print, I went ahead and opted for a 300% scaled up model of Soul the Holiest from Artisan Guild of Mine Manufacturing. I could have gone even bigger to be honest, possibly 500%, but I wasn't sure I had enough resin for that kind of project to be honest. The print process was as flawless as you'd expect it to be. I didn't have any failures and all supports connected perfectly and in total the model took about 250 hours of printing. Now the next thing to note is when you print super large resin prints, you also need a super large cleaning bath and that means a ton of cleaning material. Thankfully I get my IPA in 5 liter jerry cans. So I have more than enough. I did not, however, have a large enough container, so my wife sacrificed one of her Tupperware containers for the good of the channel, and because secretly I think she wants me to buy new ones. More important than that, if you want to use UV lighting to cure your prints, you will also need a super large curing chamber. Now in my case, most of the parts weren't full build size, so they fit in my Prusa curing machine um, quite nicely. For the bigger parts, I simply used the gorgeous Maltese Sun and let them sit outside for a while. Removing supports was quite a task on its own due to the fact that I had used an excessive amount of them, much more than I probably should have, but I wasn't sure how a large format MSLA uh, would handle large prints and thought the supports might actually disconnect mid print. And therefore I used a lot of supports with a large connecting bead. This gave me much more work to do in post-processing and after removing all the supports and cleaning the parts in IPA with a toothbrush, it was time to post-process. I used my Dremel to flatten out all the support joints I could find and admittedly I missed quite a lot of them because it was just quite a lot. It was a long and tedious task but one that taught me several lessons in supports and also the capabilities of the machine. Once again, if you ever plan on using a Dremel to drill out uh, support beads, make sure you use a respirator and goggles because the fine particles of resin could be very toxic. Once most of the post-processing was done, it was time to paint and this was the fun part for me.
The end result was one of the most satisfying models I ever did, to be honest. It was the first paint job I had done in months, so it was mostly me getting back into practice. But the quality came out great. Now I admit I could have put in a lot more work on the post-processing and also the paint, as I missed some support joints, and I never even covered up the drain holes when I hollowed out the model. But they aren't too noticeable, so I, I really don't mind. The quality of the print itself is impeccable, of course. I say that because I, you know, knowing that I wouldn't expect anything else from a standard size MSLA machine. But I had my doubts initially from such a large LCD screen on organic shape with precision and smoothness, expecting more pixelations on the corner of the edges, but it definitely didn't let me down. Now this machine is almost three year old and I still felt I needed to get this review out in order to give my thoughts on it because uh, many of you have asked me about it. Nowadays, Paypoly have brought out additional large format MSLA printers like the Phenom L, which has an even larger print volume on the X and the Y axis, plus about 20% uh, faster printing times. They also released the Phenom Noir, which has also a larger build volume than the standard Phenom, but has a monochrome LCD, uh, which produces prints twice as fast as the Phenom and gives your LCD panel three to four times the life expectancy of the standard one, which is great. This week, Paypoly also announced the uh, Phenom XXL, which is a machine of huge proportions and even compared to the to the Phenom, standard Phenom, it just trumps it completely. So I'm really looking forward to one day being able to play with one of those. Now the great thing about all this is that Paypoly will be able to raise upgrades for the stock Phenom in the future for those wishing to do so. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to upgrade to a monochrome LCD, which would make the Phenom even better because you'll have faster print times and better life expectancy for the LCD. Now the Paypoly Phenom costs around $2,000 and while that is not a small price tag, you get a lot of printer. While most makers will preferably stick to the budget MSLA machines like the Photon or the Mars, for model and miniature printing, the Phenom is the perfect machine for cosplayers and businesses who want higher output and shorter lead times. All in all though, the Phenom is a machine I have recommended in the past and I still do. It's hard to find a machine that can produce such quality resin prints with such a build volume on such a price tag. That is it for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, happy making guys.